Hey, this is Michael Emery. Thanks for tuning into the Slow Baja. This podcast is powered by Tequila Fortaleza, handmade in small batches, and hands down, my favorite tequila. You know, I've long said it. Ask your doctor if Baja is right for you. If you've been hankering to get down to Slow Baja, you got to check out the Adventures tab at slowbaja.com. All my trips are there from my vintage extravaganzas in summer and fall. And of course, your meals are included on the fall trip. Good dirt roads, private campsites, ranch days, great food and great people. Let me tell you about my winter 2025 expedition. You know, that's already on the calendar, winter 2025. That's for you folks with the new stuff. All those folks, the complainers who uh, tell me they don't have anything old, but they want to come with me. Well, the winter expedition is for you. We've got whale watching. We've got beach camping. And once again, that is a open to trucks of any age. The common denominator on all these trips, they're small. They're immersive. We go slow. We say hello. Well, to find your trip, check out the Adventures tab at slowbaja.com. Now, stay tuned because I'm going to be adding some non-motorized adventures soon. So who's ready to go on a mule packing trip with me in the mountains above Loretto? You know, I just went and I can't wait to share a super, super slow Baja experience with you. And just so you know, I'm always open to help you with your Baja trip planning. And if you'd like me to organize and lead a private guided tour, I've done it. I loved it. All the pictures, all the information, all the deets are over there at slowbaja.com slash adventures, or just hit me up at slowbaja.com slash contact. Hey, big thanks to those of you who've contributed to our Baja Baseball Project. You know, we launched our gear deliveries on my winter expedition. Michael and Matthew from Barbers for Baja were along for the ride, and we got to deliver that critically needed baseball gear up and down the peninsula. It was really, truly amazing. And on my last trip, I got to uh, go to the state baseball championships and see some of our alums playing, some uh, recipients of the Baja baseball gear deliveries. And congratulations to Guerrero Negro and Mulahe, the Austineros and the Cardinalitos won silver and bronze at the state championships. Big stuff. And it was really fun to be there and fun to uh, see them. All right. Well, please help us continue this vital work. Make your tax deductible donation at the Barbers for Baja. Click barbersforbaja.org. Click the Baseball in Baja link, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really do. It is so amazingly gratifying to uh, be able to give these kids this uh, chance to keep playing this sport, keep them on the field, keep them out of trouble. Please check it out. Baseball in Baja link at barbersforbaja.org. Thank you. Hey, thanks for tuning in to today's Slow Baja. My heaping dose of gratitude goes out to Noah Culver. Now, Noah's a great photographer, videographer, and he reached out to me months ago and in typical Slow Baja fashion, caught me on a travel day or a something day, a tequila day, I don't know what day, and I totally blew him off. Uh, never got back to him, but he was persistent and he reached out again, and he does video for Iron and Resin and was kind enough to film the interview, my Slow Baja conversation conversation with Iron and Resin's founder, Tom Hill. If you haven't seen that one, I implore you to check that out. Tom's an interesting dude, had some good times in Baja that we were able to talk about. But Noah is the force behind the brand new Iron and Resin podcast called The Wild Ones, and I am guest number two. So there will be some uh, uh, link in the show notes. Uh, Check that show out. I love the first episode, and I am uh, really Uh, honored and humbled to be the guest of the second episode. So Noah Culver, thanks for reaching out. Thanks for being persistent. Thanks for tracking me down. And uh, all right, well, on to today's show. Today's guest is Noel Bavani Siance of Los Sagrados Horse Sanctuary in Pescadero down in Baja Sur. Now, Noel was kind enough to uh, put me up with the guest of Slow Baja Conversation number 150, which is just around the corner. I can't believe it, 150 episodes. But I had uh, Carl Honore in town. He had come into uh, Baja for the Modern Elder Academy, and he came in a few days early, and I was able to pick him up at the airport in old Slow Baja and drove up the coast to uh, Pescadero and down a dirt road. And Carl was just in from London. He thought the whole thing was pretty 
damn cool. Anyways, we stayed at the sanctuary and I was in a glamping tent. Carl was in a beautiful stone cabin. There's another room inside the, the horse stable itself, inside the barn. Um, there you can camp there. Met a wonderful judge from uh, Alaska. Susan, if you're listening, it's so lovely to spend a little time with you. She, she was there in her sprinter van. My film crew camped in tents and in their truck. Uh, it's a very cool spot and it probably has the best damn showers in all of Baja. So check it out, Los Sagrados Horse Sanctuary. And super thanks to uh, Noel for reaching out to her pal, Javier Placencia, and getting me and the film guys hooked up. Uh, Javier uh, took care of us for dinner uh, to thank me for bringing baseball gear to the kids of Toto Santo. So without further ado, Noel Bavani Siance, Los Sagrados Horse Sanctuary, today on Slow Baja. Noel. Hey. Hi. Welcome to Slow Baja, or I should say I'm stoked to be at your Los Sagrados uh, Horse and Donkey Sanctuary because it's super slow Baja. Yeah, we're we're kind of working on the slow with that's our that's our focus, slowing people down. Yeah, super slow. It's wonderful. Thank you. Um, I want to pay you a compliment right off the bat. Sure thing. I don't know who your plumber is. I don't know what's going on here, but you have the best shower in Baja, and I'm not kidding. Wow. This I appreciate is, that. I designed it with a lot of love. Yeah. This is uh, year 40 for me in Baja. Oh, cool. Started off as just a dumb college kid, pretty young, but son of a gun. That's a damn nice shower. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, we wanted it to be an outdoor, indoor shower. So. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about, well, tell, tell me about your journey. What, where am I? What am I doing here? What's this place all about? Because well, it's wonderful. You landed in a place to desert bathe, as we say, with the beautiful Sierra de la Laguna mountains behind us. We're in the chaparrales, uh, the foothills of the mountains in the back part of Pescadero. Um, I like to call it backcountry, Pescadero. And we're just minutes from the sea, but in a world that speaks closer to nature. We have a lot of beautiful trees here. The horses have a lot of great shade. Uh, we wanted to create a sanctuary that people could come and de-stress, decompress, be moved by grounding, you know, having a bit of ecotherapy, uh, I think is the new wave of relaxation. And that's how we wanted to create a back to earth experience. Well, you did it. Thank it's you. wonderful. I really enjoyed staying in a... I was in a glamping tent last night. My my new friend, Carl Honoré, in praise of slowness, was in your cabin, which was lovely. And he couldn't get the guy out of here today. Wow. He was chilling out in your, uh, in your hammock and was wonderful. And we met you at the farmer's market in town. And you directed us to the best ceviche tostadas and fish tacos. It was really lovely. Nice. I'm glad you're having a good first day. Yeah. The, yeah. the place has a uh, s sort of um, serenity, so it lets people drop into another vibe, and it's hard to tell time here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So how did you get here? I got here um, in 1995. I was working as a wardrobe stylist and photographer in uh, Los Angeles for many years. I was in the industry. And I was working on a Sports Illustrated project with a photographer named Philip Dixon. And Philip was a big Baja fan, and he always brought shoots down here. So we shot in Cabo. And after the shoot, he invited me to come to Todos Santos to visit some friends. We stayed a few extra days, and uh, I met Todos Santos in 1995 for the first time. Oh, cool. And there I began my uh, journey with horses. I met a woman named Uva, who was a legend here, or is a legend here. And she had horses in the Pastora area. And he dropped me there to ride with Uva, and I fell in love with Baja and the whole scene. So I would go back to L.A. work, and then come down and bring Uva's horse supplies, halters, things like that. Now, you told me a story. You bought your first horse, didn't tell your parents or anything you took took some time off doing doing stuff that teenagers do they thought and you came home and said dad I bought a horse that's you're 16 right. I was 16 I <laughs> bought my first Morgan Arab mellow fellow we called him and uh, my dad was real proud of me he said I bought a good horse so. that's a good compliment from a dad right that's right yeah 
be like going off and buying your first car without asking for your dad's Very help. Very true. Very yeah. true. So you got a good one. I got a good one. He checked his feet and he gave me the A OK. And what brought that on? You, you've had a history with horses. Obviously, you don't walk out and buy a horse. Yeah. I had an older sister that I had a passion for horses, and she was a really great hunter jumper. She was 10 years older than me. So we kind of grew up at the barn and uh, worked the barn and helped the barn out with pony rides and lessons and camps. And uh, then I just uh, sort of fell into the horse thing and bought my first horse at 16 and then took a ho- took that horse to college with me. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And so college, post-college, working in New York. Cost, working in New York. Cost you your horse. You had to move it along to somebody who would take good care of Mellow Fellow. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Mellow Fellow was a really special horse. He was sort of um, push button. I trained him to be, uh, he could, you could command him at a walk track canter. And so he ended up being a great therapy horse before the word therapy horse was even in the world. And so we ended up, do- I no- donated him to a wonderful organization that has a history of uh, working with handicapped children and children with autism. And so he did great there. Yeah, and you eventually eventually got your way out to Los Angeles so you could have a horse. Yeah, I went out to Los Angeles. Lots of decisions being made in your life revolving around can you or cannot you, can, can you or can't you have a horse? That's right. Horses have always kind of called me to places. And uh, I worked in Los Angeles for many years, and every time I would... Uh, have a little burnout from heavy loads of work and long hours, I would uh, go off on a vacation riding horses wherever it would be. Can you talk about that a little bit? What what being on a horse does, what, what the interaction, what the connection to a horse and to horses is? I mean, I grew up with horses. We had 10 acres. I mean, horses were just, I hopped on a bareback and rode around with a halter my entire childhood. But not everybody had that. Yeah, it's um, it's a very unique heart and soul connection i think that people generally feel uh, a little more relaxed around horses than they're aware of horses keep us in the present you cannot really be around horses if you're thinking about the past or if you're worried about the future because it's not safe and it's also um, they require our total awareness so they're big teachers in awareness and i think they're big teachers in connecting the heart connecting your soul, um, slowing down, and also just being grounded, being in nature. For me, that was always um, very healthy, and it was always uh, healthy for my mental health to be around their vibration, their energy field, calming, serenity. Take me through 1995. Was that like a uh, Sports Illustrated swimsuit model thing? Because they don't do a lot in... Cabo unless yeah. you're doing that kind of stuff. It was just a, I think it was a, it wasn't the calendar shoot. Okay. It was just another shoot for the magazine. Okay. So take me from that first trip and then you're coming back here whenever you get a chance to now you have this, the sanctuary. Yeah. You're I, all in. I am all in. I always wanted to um, have a horse rescue. I was hoping that I would partner with Uva Anderson on her horse project. Um, but then my life unfolded here and my partner is a farmer and he had owned this land. His name is Ross Vale. He's a legendary, iconic farmer here in the Baja. He's been farming in this area for 40 years. And he knew that uh, we had had, I had had Habibi for about three years and I was moving him to different barns and I wanted to find some place that was really long standing and that had some future. So we created this sanctuary together and he donated this land to the project. Wow. So we created a nonprofit. Wow. So let's get into that. Yeah. What do you do here? What who we comes? We help people. You're, you're already hooked up with my buddy John Davy, Slow Baja Love. That's right. Yeah, That's Los right. Los Solas uh, recovery. That's wonderful. We love helping people heal. We feel that Um, Our concentration is not really in jumping or equine uh, activities that involve competition. We do desert trail rides here. We do horseback riding lessons, like very conscious horsemanship lessons. We teach people about um, how to attack a horse up, how to take a horse out, how to bathe a horse, 
everything, um, all aspects of horsemanship. We have a little kids camp, a multi-day ki- kids camp we offer. Which just ended the day uh, I arrived, ended. so I, I missed it, unfortunately. Yeah, we had four days of 20 children here. Wow. We raised money for some of the local kids to have scholarships to those programs. Um, next year, we're also we're doing some meditation with horses. Uh, we're doing Reiki with horses, body work with horses, things like that, sound healing with horses. Uh, it's just really about healing arts, I think, yeah, and how sure. we can bring uh, the equine therapy or equine assisted services to, peop- to people in a very natural way. Um, you have a little background as a healer. You're, you're, you're doing Reiki, you're doing um, Kundalini yoga. You've got, you've got this in your soul, you can't, can't help it. Yeah, I, um, I've been a certified Kundalini yoga teacher for over 20 years. I also am a Reiki master. I'm also a life coach. So working with the horses in those in those ways is um, really helpful for people. Our clients really feel heard, seen. Um, when I'm working with somebody, the horse is really the person that's helping or the entity that's helping the person. Mm. The horse is non-judgmental. The horse allows people to be very present, um, to feel safe. Uh, they don't feel judged, so maybe we need to cut that. No, no, good. No, we're good. <laughs> um, they don't feel judged is important these days. Yeah, absolutely. And the horses are really, um, what's the word? they're like the miracle workers. They they make people feel zen. Everybody who walks away from this experience here feels like they're calmer, they're smiling, they're feeling um, in their body. And I think that that's really what we need right now as we face this uh, epidemic of being on our devices, of being overstimulated. And it's, it's just therapeutic to feed a horse or to give a horse water. Just to be around them, to hear them. Yeah, absolutely. To hear them, you know, doing their horse things. Sure thing. Yeah, so um, you've got this amazing sanctuary. What can people do here like me, hit you up to say, hey, I'm, I've got this master of slow. We're looking for a slow experience. And you provided the slow experience for us with the glamping and his cabin. You've got some folks ca- um, camping here a little bit, some folks in the van life world. My photographer team is hanging out here. You, you seem to be open to people who aren't causing problems. Yeah, absolutely. We like to have people have a little personal retreat here. They could come for a a day, a week, a month. Um, We also hold uh, women's groups. We also hold uh, writers' retreats. We also hold recovery retreats here. Um, People can kind of have a curated experience where we bring in body workers or we bring in massage therapists or chefs things to support their experience. Um, It's a little rustic, and I think that's part of the healing journey, being outside our bathroom house, our bathhouse is outside. Um, It involves you being here, being on the land, and I think that's part of the experience. Yeah, it's just wonderful to hear the crunch of the earth under my feet. Yeah. Under my hirachis. Back to nature. Yeah, it's wonderful. Hey, tell me a little bit about Ross and the farm. Ross's farm is um, next door, and uh, he has a beautiful farm across the road in Pescadero. We grow, or he grows, um, a lot of herbs. Herbs like sage, rosemary, mint, uh, tarragon, basil. We also grow an herb called Damiana, which is a beautiful tea that we're drinking right, right. now. And an aphrodisiac, um, so slow Baja aphrodisiac, knows that. But it's also an adaptogenic. And so it works with your nervous system. It calms the heart. And I think ultimately it just creates a really relaxing experience. It's also the tea, I call it like the ginseng of the Baja. So it's very good for your kidneys. It's great for your digestive system. Great. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for Absolutely, brewing some for me. For sure. Yeah. I think 20 years ago when we were here, Damiana was in those bottles with the big woman in the yeah. body of the woman the the voluptuous um the woman. pregnant woman yeah and i'm trying to think of the, the sculptor's name who that bo- the bottle reminds me of his his sculpture work but 
what I'm getting to is in my ex- first experiences with Damiano, we're only in a margarita. This is this is serious. This yeah, is this the is real a little deal. Bit, yeah, this, this is the real deal. This is the pure medicinal. We also have a line of Damiano products centered around this, and some of the proceeds from that line go back to here at the Horse Rescue. Right, and you've got a, a chocolate bar, chocolate beautiful bar. handcrafted. Yeah. Serious chocolate bar. Baja Mandala, yeah. And we have a, a five flavors. They're all made with herbs from the farm, herbal oils from the farm. Um, so is there something you want to talk about? I wanted to ask you about this horse behind me. Can you tell Habibi. me his story? Habibi. Yeah, Habibi was a rescue that I acquired after Odile. Um, Hurricane Odile. Hurricane Odile. Devastated this area. Yeah, about nine years ago. Uh, and this horse was owned by a man here in the area who could not afford to keep him. And so I met Habibi, and he had a little of a lower back issue. Um, but he's turned out to be a really wonderful part of, an integral part of the ranch. He's not uh, the kind of horse you can ride for hours, but he is a wonderful therapy horse, and he works with children. He's a really loving um gentle soul and he's a big part of the herd here so here at slow baja we can't wait to drive our old land cruiser south of the border and when we go we'll be going with baja bound insurance their website's fast and easy to use check them out at bajabound.com that's bajabound.com serving mexico travelers since 1994 you know i don't always drink beer but when I do, it's a slow Baja Mexican lager for my friends at Moto Sonora Brewing in Tucson, Arizona. If you're in Tucson, hell, if you're anywhere in Arizona, get yourself over to Moto Sonora Brewing, order up an ice cold slow Baja Mexican lager. And if you love it, pick yourself up a six pack to go. That's right, you can get it right there in the cooler, right there at the brewery. That's Moto Sonora Brewing in Tucson, Arizona. Can you talk a little bit about what happens in an experience when you bring local kids here? You've got some programs. You've got some goals. You're really working on young women, trying yes. trying to make young women understand that there's more. There's more in the world than maybe they've they've understood up until this point, and putting them in charge of their lives and their bodies. And I think you've got some lofty goals. I'd love you to tell me a little bit about that. Sure, sure. Well, I think that there's a lot of sports for boys here. Sure. There's a lot of baseball and some other wonderful sports that um, encourage boys to be together and be teammates. And there's really a lack of um, children, females, girls uniting and doing things together. So I would like to um, raise some awareness with this topic. And next year we're, we're writing a grant proposal of a program that we're going to call uh, Taking the Reins. And Taking the Reins is about leadership. It's about teaching these young girls between 10 and 14, 15 in that age range, that they can um, create some boundaries in their life. They can create some discipline. They can also uh, feel more empowered and have some more leadership skills that the horse can teach them, being on horseback, uh, being with the horses, and I think these girls are going to benefit from this program deeply because I think they're really not finding their way in our community in Pescadero. There's not that many things for them to be part of. So this is a really nice program. And I've seen some really great results in other per- parts of the country and other parts of the U.S. with this program, helping the girls lower their um, pregnancy rates. And in this area, that's a big issue. So we hope that this could be a very... um, High impact. Yeah, something that takes the ranch in a direction of really healing the local struggles. Yeah, so how is the ranch, how is the nonprofit funded? What can you talk about, a little bit about that, and a little bit about how maybe people can participate and help if they're so inclined? Yes. Um, We have a sponsor a horse program. You can sponsor a horse for a month, three months, or a year. We also have two donkeys um, that are part of the herd. Heard them early this morning. And um, we also have, uh, you can sponsor a clinic, you can sponsor a vet clinic, you can sponsor hay for a month, um, you could sponsor a farrier clinic as well. 
We also take donations from U.S. companies. We have an organization that we work with, a nonprofit in the States that is a partner of ours. We also have a nonprofit here in Mexico. So there's many ways you can help. You can also volunteer. Come in and volunteer for a day if you're touring. We do have a fee for that because um, it's an experience of equine connection and we teach a lot. We also have volunteers that uh, come in Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays are our volunteer hours, 9 a.m. to 11. And those people really um, are dedicated and devoted to being here six to nine hours a week. Um, how else you can help is there are many um, things that we need. We have an Amazon wish list. For example, uh, Sydney here got a new collar this month or a new halter. Sydney. Amazon wish list. Um, a barn always needs a lot of supplies, so here she is. Uh, Come on in, Sydney. Would you like to do some? She mm. does Breath of Fire. We um, also have a trailer that we use, and we always need parts for that kind of thing, so there's many ways to help. Hey, I, I wanted to ask you about the native, the the wild, the the burrow population here. You've got burrows on the property. Donkeys can. I'm, and I excuse my ignorance. I'm not quite sure the proper terminology. Is there a difference between a donkey and a burrow, or no. is it one and the same? A donkey and a burrow are the same. Okay. Yeah. A mule and a donkey is different. Definitely different. Okay. So I got that. I got. I have half of it right. And Baja is icon is the donkey, right? Right. So can we talk a little bit about what's going on with the donkey population here? Yeah. I don't so, know a lot, but I know they're in decline. So yes, um, the donkey population has declined, and uh, we had 1.5 million in the early 90s in Mexico. We have 300,000 now wow. in the whole country. So um, we're really working hard to preserve Baja donkeys and to create some awareness. Um, it's very sad here because they're often killed on the highway. There's a lot of um, lack of trafficking regulations and um, a lot of accidents on the road with livestock in general. Sure. That's probably the most dangerous thing. People always worry about you're going to Mexico and aren't you? concerned about the cartels and it's no it's driving is the most dangerous thing That's i do here true. no so, driving at night no driving at night of course of course i do Which have to drive slow way, at right? night but yeah no driving at night and it and the slower you go save a donkey go slow maybe we're onto something there Absolutely. And we have a program here where you do walking a donkey, which is really lovely. A lot of people have never touched a donkey, um, have never been close to a donkey. So even children feel really connected to that experience. And we also have a connecting with their herd experience that involves just like sitting out here like we're doing and being with them. Yeah, you know, there's something really beautiful about Baja and donkeys go together. I was in Zacatitos yesterday and the donkeys are just wandering right on up, and they come up to your car and say hello, and I'm assuming that people are feeding them carrots and other things there. But there's just a beautiful there's beautiful curiosity in the donkeys here. Yeah, we really need to respect them. They're, they're highly intelligent animals. Uh, did you know how long a donkey lives? I have no idea. 40 to 50 years. Amazing. Isn't that amazing? And do you know that they won't forget your face for 20 years? They have an incredible memory. Wow. Another thing wow. about donkeys that I taught the kids yesterday was they don't have an odor. Donkeys? Yeah, horses have a smell, but if you touch a donkey, they are odorless. Hmm. Yeah, so we have Sydney here, and the white, the white donkey here, and Cosmo, her cousin, the Pinto. He's beautiful. And Cosmo is about seven years old, and Sydney's four. And we hope that we can increase our, our donkeys here at the sanctuary and uh, help a few more have a safe and calm life. Terrific. With well, respect. best place for folks to find out about you. Where's the, where's the best place our for folks? Our website. And yeah. we also have an Instagram page that's kind of fun. We have a link in bio section there that you can book an experience. You can go for a desert trail ride. Um, you can just visit the ranch. We also rent the ranch for venues birthday parties for children, quinceañeras, weddings, showers, things like that as a location. And your rooms are on Airbnb? Our rooms are on Airbnb. You could also have a day retreat here. Bring your own retreat group here, and we can help you with some equine therapy, equine-assisted learning services, or um, things to do with your group. So let's, uh, let's shout out that 
website. Tell me your web address. Los Sagrados, which means the sacred ones. Yeah. L-O-S Sagrados, S-A-G-R-A-D-O-S dot org. LosSagrados.org. There will be a link in the show notes for that, folks. Instagram as well, at Los Sagrados. Yeah. It's really nice having you guys here. It's been a real delight. Nice to come down here and slow down. Mm, it is super. Slow Baja approved. And again, the man who wrote the book in praise of slowness, you couldn't get him out of the hammock this morning. That's awesome. Yeah, we're going to have to get him back here for a writer's retreat. Yeah, terrific. That'd be fun. Terrific. Well, Noel, thank you so much for sharing your ranch and your life and your story with Slow Baja, and I hope to come back real soon. Thank you. We love to have you. Best, ciao, best, ciao. best shower in Baja, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that lightly. Great bedding and a damn fine mattress. I really had a great <laughs> sleep. So cozy. Sleep. You're doing some stuff really, really, oh, really well. So I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Right. Thanks. Right we did it. Cheers. Hey, Los Cerrados. Hope you uh, enjoyed that conversation. I really enjoyed my stay there. Really a cool spot and sincerely, maybe the best shower, outdoor showers, maybe the best showers in Baja. Um, Really lovely. Lots of volunteers rolled through while I was there looking after the horses and the donkeys and keeping the barn clean and the property spotless. That was really interesting. Um, Well run. Check it out if you're inclined to to help out or volunteer. All right. Well, if you want to help me keep this show on the road, you can do that by dropping a taco in the tank. Click at slowbaja.com. Go on to the donations page. Drop those tacos. You know, I need them. I need them to keep this show on the road. I'm getting getting a completely new suspension um, on my truck because the last one was installed improperly and it ate itself up and tore the frame up and got all sorts of problems from my last trip. So if you've got a few tacos in your pocket, drop them because I could use them. Uh, Also, Slow Baja Shop. Slow Baja Shop. So heartening to be at Overland Expo and see some folks. Seth was rocking a Slow Baja pocket tee. Doug Miller was wearing a Slow Baja hat. It was really cool to see those Slow Baja stickers in the parking lot on people's rigs that I don't even know them, which really, really uh, is gratifying. So get yourself some Slow Baja stickers, that new Keep Baja Slow sticker. You should have that on your Yeti. You should have that on your insulated mug. It should be on the back window of your Forerunner or Tacoma or Sprinter van or whatever you're driving that you'd love to be in Baja and instead you're just stuck in traffic here. Well, get that sticker and it will magically transform you and it will tell everybody that you're a fan of keeping Baja slow and aren't we all. All right, uh, I'm going to tell you about my pal Mary McGee. She had a pal named Steve McQueen. Steve loved Baja. He really did. And he said, you know, Mary, Baja's life. Anything that happens before or after is just waiting. You know, people always ask me, what's the best modification that I've ever made to slow Baja? Without a doubt, it's my Shield Man seats. You know, Toby at Shield Man USA could not be easier to work with. He recommended a Vario F for me and a Vario F XXL for my navigator, Ted. This Ted's kind of a big guy. And Toby was absolutely right. The seats are great and they fit both of us perfectly. And let me tell you, after driving around Baja for over a year on these seats, I could not be happier. Shield Man, slow Baja approved. Learn more and get yours at shieldman.com. <laughs>